It seems that science has already answered all questions about the origin of man, but it has not. Recently, scientists have been talking about a mysterious species that left an admixture in the DNA of modern humans. What is this species? And what are its peculiarities? Now you're about to find out. Let's go. A few years ago, scientists came to some startling conclusions. It turns out that modern humans can have not only Neanderthals and Denisovians people as ancestors. Could we be talking about a new species? Let's take it one step at a time. So, in 2016, American scientists said that the inhabitants of the Pacific Islands have particles of DNA of another unknown ancestor. They came to this conclusion after analyzing the genome of Melanesians. And Melanesia, by the way, is an island group in the Pacific Ocean, which includes the Solomon Islands, Fiji, Vanuatu, and other states. But how is it that this new ancestor was just found recently? It's more than simple. This study is the result of new technology that allows it to perform genetic modeling with greater accuracy. So, Melanesians are a new species? About 60,000 years ago, the ancestors of modern humans migrated from Africa. Once in Europe, they encountered other Homo species. Mixing between species was cemented in the genome of modern humans. Thus, the genome of many Europeans and Asians contains from 2 to 4 percent of the Neanderthal genome. But everything is much more complicated with the DNA of humans from Denisova Cave, especially in the case of Melanesians. Scientists believe that Melanesians have only about 1 percent of the genome, composed of Denisovian genes, although according to the estimates of other researchers, this figure should be 3 to 6 percent. Bolender, the American geneticist, believes that this missing 2 to 5 percent came from an unknown third ancestor. As Bolander stated, the discovery has little in common with Neanderthals and Denisovans. But does this mean that the discovery of a new branch of the hominoid tree could significantly change the idea of human evolution? Bolander's hypothesis is confirmed by the results of an independent study of scientists from Denmark. They analyzed the DNA of 83 Australian Aborigines and 25 mountaineers in Papua New Guinea. At the time, it was the most extensive study of the genome of the local indigenous populations. Their DNA turned to be out much closer to Denisovan's DNA than the genome of Europeans, but at the same time led scientists to assume that a third ancestor, as it were, also existed. How about we go from ancestors to descendants and discuss this topic? There are many hypotheses about who our descendants might be, and one of them is exotic. What if the people of the future are aliens? People of the future Is it possible that Earth is constantly visited by aliens, but we mere mortals have no idea about it? Is it possible that someone's just covering up alien tracks? I'm sure you know the movie Men in Black. There's a secret organization of the same name involved in controlling the presence of aliens who've been living and working among humans on Earth for years. Why am I saying this? What if, purely hypothetically, aliens live among us, keeping an eye on us, studying us, and at the same time being able to travel through time? How would you react if you found out you had a long-lost relative? What if that long-lost relative was from another planet in our galaxy? What if that distant planet was home to billions of people like Earth? But these people in quotation marks, of course, are nothing like us at all because they're from the future. Could aliens be future versions of humans? How far ahead of us could they be in every way? Let's take it one step at a time. Roswell Incident In the summer of 1947, a mysterious object crashed in the desert near the town of Roswell, New Mexico. It went down in history as the Roswell Incident. You may have heard the story. According to one version, it was an alien spacecraft. Proponents of this version believed that the authorities captured an alien and classified what happened. The official position of the U.S. Air Force was that a weather balloon, used as part of a classified program, fell in Roswell. But could it really have been an alien? Then, decades later, enthusiasts with top-secret clearance reported that the mysterious crash involved time travelers. Somehow, these people of the future develop technology that allows them to overcome technological limitations and prevents us, modern humans, from making the same flights and travels. 
Some theories tend to suggest that these people of the future travel back in time to understand their biological past. Perhaps these same time travelers helped our ancestors make huge breakthroughs in scientific and technical knowledge in a relatively short period of time. If any of these theories are true, should we be prepared for another visit from human aliens sometime in the near future? In this century, for example? And what can we expect from such close third-kind encounter? This immediately brings to mind Steven Spielberg's sci-fi drama Close Encounters of the Third Kind. The plot centers on an encounter between humans and an alien civilization. The name comes from the classification of contact with aliens in which the third kind denotes human observation of aliens or animate beings. By the way, during the planning stage, the director thoroughly studied various reports and all kinds of information about UFOs. Moreover, he met with people who, in one way or another, encountered phenomena unknown to mankind, and he even hired a UFOlogist as a scientific consultant. If aliens, I mean people from the future, came to visit us, they would probably look just like they are usually shown in the movies. Like us, they'd still walk on two legs, but their heads and eyes would be many times bigger. All of this fits with predictions on how modern humans will evolve in the future. Our heads might get bigger and the top of our skull would become more rounded to accommodate a larger brain. And when our civilization becomes advanced enough for interplanetary travel, our eyes will also get bigger so that we can see better in the dimmer environment that's farther away from the sun. Perhaps the people of the future will find a way to slow down the aging process. In this way, it will be possible to make several journeys in one lifetime to places thousands of light years away. If we, for example, want to take a trip to a distance of 60,000 light years, and of course if our technology is advanced to carry out such a large-scale action, the flight would last 60 years for all those on board. But when these travelers return to Earth, it will appear that 60,000 years have passed. If the people of the future find a way to live for hundreds or even thousands of years, will this lead to mass overpopulation of the planet? If they do uncover the secrets of how to live that long, it's likely that before then they'll necessarily succeed in optimizing their existence. As trite as it may sound, the human civilization of the future would be far more efficient than ours. The reason's simple. Evolutionarily, they would be centuries, if not millennia, ahead of us. The people of the future would be much smarter. They would have better technology to make the most efficient use of space and live in densely populated worlds without producing as much pollution as we, unfortunately, do on Earth. The people of the future will likely have dozens of technological implants and microchips to make their lives easier. Now, think about all that your cell phone can do and imagine that you can control it just by the power of your mind and that it's just a little microchip in your brain. Convenient, isn't it? A microchip or similar implant can also easily explain the following fact. Those who claim to have encountered and spoken to aliens said that the aliens communicated with them in their own language. Could it be that the people of the future will have automatic translators embedded in their brains? Or will the people of the future evolve using different languages? Or maybe they'll use one universal language, like Esperanto. So maybe aliens are actually future humans traveling back in time to better understand their past by studying us. That's all, guys. Do you believe that aliens could be among us? Share your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching and see you later.